Praise the Lord. Welcome, everybody. We are here. We're recording, working this out. Welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study. We're going to talk about sin. And I don't mean to be one of those stereotypical, stereotypical preachers that always talks about sin. But I believe it is a subject that we really don't take seriously enough because it may have been overpreached. Not that there could be, but I don't. I think we've learned to bluff it off a little bit. We're going to go in detail with it and how it can interrupt everything that we're trying to do. But before we do, let me get the announcements out of the way. Uh, first things first, I want to remind you that our church still needs your offering and your support. You can go to Tithely and help us out there. You can go to Cash App and help us out there. Or you can go to the bank and make your own deposit. Last week, I had Dee Dee's name up there. And this week, I want to thank Kathy for her donation of $10,000. Yay! Everybody give her a hand. My dad warned me that I really shouldn't make those jokes because some people may think it's seriously and we don't need offering if we got people giving us $10,000. I assure you, they don't have $10,000 and we need your money. Please help. Um, I did put on Facebook a little, not a long time, didn't give you a whole lot of notice, but prayer requests. We're going to go before those right now, and let's get those praying for. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for who you are and everything that you've done for us, Lord. Thank you for keeping us safe, though. Thank you for still providing, Lord. I pray for Dee Dee. You know the situation there that she mentioned, God. I pray for Saber, Lord. You know her health situation. God, bless my friend Larry Vinson and the struggles he's going through. He and his wife, Lord, you are able, Lord, you know, Jesus. God, I pray for your continual protection over our church, Lord, over our nation, over all the leaders, God. This is not easy. I would not want to be in their position, Lord. Lord, be with all of our friends and all of our family. God, I pray for the anointing on these services, Lord. This is not just something we're doing out of habit or tradition, but Lord, there's meaning to this and there's power behind it, Lord, and I pray that it opens doors, God, and it finds its way to the hearts of the people that you want to hear it, Lord. Bless them, Jesus. I thank you for it in your holy name and bless this service in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for praying with me. If you'll turn your Bibles to the book of First Chronicles, chapter 28, verse 1. Book of Chronicles, chapter 18, verse 1. We're going to actually read the first four verses. And David assembled all the princes of Israel, and the princes of the tribes, and the captains of the companies that ministered to the king by course, and the captains over the thousands, and captains over the hundreds, and the stewards over all the substance and possession of the king and of his sons, with the officers, and with the mighty men, and with all the valiant men unto Jerusalem. Then David the king stood up upon his feet and said, Hear me, my brethren, and my people. As for me... I had in my heart to build a house of rest for the ark of the covenant of the Lord and for the footstool of our God and had made ready for the building. But God said unto me, Thou shalt not build a house for my name because thou hast been a man of war and hast shed blood. Howbeit the Lord God of Israel chose me before all the house of my father to be king over Israel forever. For he hath chosen Judah to be the ruler in the house of Judah, in the house of my father, and among the sons of my father he liked to me, king over all Israel. I don't know what noises you heard in the background, but I've got a dog running around me. Praise God. I hope he gets the Holy Ghost and prays through, okay? But, so we're going to talk about sin, and you see there, that David had good intentions. He wanted to build a house of God. He wanted to build a tabernacle. And God said no. So what does that tell you? Verse 4 said, How be it the Lord God of Israel chose me before all the house of my father to be king over Israel forever. For, but So he was chosen to be king, but yet he wouldn't be allowed to build this house because of his past. Your good intentions do not erase the consequences of your sins. There is no way to overcome sin. 
You, you cannot just continue your sinful lifestyle and still continue to do good things. You think God is going to say, okay, he's really a good person, just made some mistakes. No, there's a process here. And sin will always ruin that process. What is sin? The Bible gives several different definitions. Uh, we're going to go to Galatians first. Galatians 5, 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. It's, we do a lot of those things. You know, witchcraft. You, you say you don't do witchcraft, but the Bible says rebellion is as witchcraft. So every time you refuse to do the right thing, you're being rebellious, you connect to your own dots. The uh, Bible says elsewhere, in those that take pleasure in them. So be careful what you find entertaining. If you find sin entertaining, then you are just as guilty as that sin. And these are things that we need to consider. There, let me give you another scripture. This is going to come from 1 Samuel. The effect of sin. Let me get 1 Samuel 15 pulled up here. 1 Samuel 15 and 20. And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, and have gone the way which the Lord sent me, and have brought Agag, the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people took of the spoil, sheep and oxen, the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed, to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of the rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected thee from being king. Uh, Saul did 99% of what he was told. As a matter of fact, I purposely didn't tell you everything he was told to do because it sounded like he did the right thing. But because he made his own decision on what was acceptable and not acceptable, he lost everything. You don't get to decide what God meant when he said, Thou shalt not. When he says, Thou shalt not, it's a period. When he says, you, Thou shalt, it's a period. You don't get to decide if the circumstances fit your needs or not. You don't get to change it a little bit and say, well, I know he said to kill everything, but if I keep the best, I can worship it, I can sacrifice it to him. There's no right way to do a wrong thing. Countless times and times again, people were punishing the Bible for trying to do a right thing the wrong way. Cain still provided a sacrifice, but he didn't provide the right sacrifice. Uh, Eli's sons... They, they offer burn incense, but it was the, the wrong burn incense. It wasn't what God had told them to do. You do not get to alter the word of God. It does not change from generation to generation. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever, regardless of what our culture and our society says is now okay. Saul, not only did he lose his kingdom, but in order for him to lose his kingdom, Jonathan had to lose his life as well. It, it cost him, him his life and his son's life. Sin is always unacceptable, and there is no excuse for it. There's no excuse, and, and there's no such thing as a small sin. Let's go to book of James. I don't I didn't prepare that one well enough, so I'm just going to read it to you. James chapter 2, verse 10 and 11. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. And it goes on to explain it. Verse 11, For he that said, Do not commit adultery, said also, Do not kill. Now if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. So we have a, we, we have a hard time accepting the little things that we want to do. 
we're good at the big things. It's kind of like the rich young ruler. I've kept all those since my youth. I'm a good person. But are we really ready to give up everything? Some of us have built our lifestyle hanging on to it, and that's why it's hard to let go. It, it costs us. You will pay a price. And I want to take you to Isaiah chapter 59 and verse 1. Behold, the, Lord, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue has muttered perverseness. Let's go back to two. Some of us, I, I get told all the time, I haven't felt God in a long time when I prayed. Well, listen here. Your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sins have hid his face from you. And he will not hear. I'm not going to tell you that every time God doesn't answer is because of your sins. But I am going to tell you you need to check your life because it just may be the case. There are seasons in which we go through a, a dark period. The Bible talks about a, a holy darkness. You know, He that walketh in the, the darkness can still hear this voice and hear the fears of the Lord. And that's in Isaiah and that's a whole other good sermon. But there are times when your lifestyle will separate you from God. And you'll come out looking, wanting to know where it is and where he is and what's going on and you lost it way back there behind you because you wouldn't change your friends or you wouldn't stop dating this person or you wouldn't do right for your job because your job wanted you to do this and so he said okay God understands it's just my job God does not understand sin as a matter of fact the entire point of Calvary was to give us the ability to deny sin. The entire, every whip was for the sake of us not having to live a life in sin anymore. That's why it offends me to no end when people will tell you that everybody sins every day. Oh, for we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. But we can't overcome sin for one day? Well, that's not a conqueror, much less more than a conqueror. The Bible says, if you know, therefore the Son has set you free, you shall be free indeed. But only for 23 hours, because at that 24th hour mark, you're going to have to sin because we sin every day. No, that's garbage. And if you believe that, I challenge you to read your Bible and to repent for disrespecting the blood of Christ. When, when we choose sin, we are disrespecting what he died for. If I was to hold up a sheet of paper, brand new, perfect white, and put one tiny spot on it, you can no longer call that paper perfect. That one blot is just as bad as 100. And there's no excuse for even the one blot. You must repent for it. I'm talking to folks that love church. Obviously, you're, you're tuned in. But it's not enough to love church. You have to love God. And I want to close with one more scripture. John 14, 15. If you love me, Keep my commandments. If ye love me, keep my commandments. If love is obedience, then what's your disobedience? What are you really choosing when you choose sin anyway? Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will choose the Lord. So with the Lord, there is protection, there's healing, there's deliverance, there's salvation. What are you giving up when you forsake that? for whatever you're wanting to cling to. Sin is a very big deal. It will cost you everything, and it's not worth it. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you again for being with us, Lord. Thank you for the patience with us, for your grace to give us an opportunity to ask for your mercy and your forgiveness, Lord. God, I do ask for forgiveness for all my sins, Lord. Forgive me for everything I've said and I've done, Lord Jesus. I want to be found right in your eyes, Lord God. I don't want anything to hinder my ministry. I don't want anything to hinder my family, Jesus. Forgive me, Lord. Lord, forgive those that are listening and praying with me, Lord Jesus. You know what's in their heart and you are able to overcome. God, I pray that they have the wisdom and the ability to forgive themselves. Give them enough faith in your forgiveness that they can believe that they are forgiven and can move on. Bless them, Lord.
Thank you. One last announcement. This coming Sunday is Easter Sunday. And we're at a stay-at-home order. I'm going to be at the church. My wife is going to, my family's going to be there. The singers are going to be there. And we're going to have an Easter service. I got sweat in my eye. I ask that you tune in and worship with us. We're going to have a few more songs than normal. It's going to, we're still going to do the egg hunt and everything else when we can. But I want to acknowledge the, the importance of Calvary. And we're going to talk about it. And we're going to have a good time. Amen. Thank you all for joining us tonight. Let me know if you have any questions. Reach out to me. Let me know if you need a Bible study or need to get baptized. Love you.